Hello, guys, and welcome to Overvolted. We are joined today by Matthew. Hi. And Aurelian. Hello. And I'm your host, Kirk. We are talking today about a few of the latest topics this week. We're going to go over the AMD fake leak, some Tiger Lake stuff, and, of course, got to hit the trifecta with NVIDIA. So let's go ahead and get started with the 6900 XT fake leak. Now, we had a copy of these slides that were emailed to Jim early last week, and apparently this was emailed out to some other known leakers as well, one of which ran with it, which is why we chose to uh, write this article here. Matthew and I collaborated and got this article out really quick after we saw that other video go up, yeah. you know, pointing out a lot of the weaknesses with the design of these slides and why we felt that they were fake. <laughs> After putting all this in an article, we're like, yep, it's definitely fake. But we chose not to run with these leaked slides because we could see right off that they were fake. It was fairly evident with what we know about the upcoming uh, Radeon series as well as just the design. It, the slides just looked wrong for, you know, for any anyone that has a trained eye for these things. I mean, there's nothing really controversial about the specs, but but we know it's fake. So it's like, I I mean, like the fact that they exist at all. That's how you know it's fake because they would never make such a slide deck for September. What is it? September thirtieth. Uh, yeah, I they believe is. They have yeah, September thirtieth. For September 30th. These things are probably made like the day of they go out. As far as I have seen in the slides that we have received in the past, yeah, they're as unpolished as probably have been finalized the day they went out. Because we've seen some typos in them, things like that. And I haven't seen any with bad data, obviously. They want to make sure they get that right. But just little quirks. And... September 30th, I've, I've received slides a week or two before a launch that still say to be determined on them. <laughs> so yeah, the fact like, that they like have the, the date on there is just ridiculous. Now, the September 30th is by all means a viable launch date. Not saying yeah. it's not, but I just don't believe anything on these slides any more than I would guesswork off of Reddit. Yeah, I mean, this is like... It lines up with what we think, but this is clearly not it. But that's exactly it. The, uh, the leaker is a clever one, so he, he made a very, very tempting bait. He's not that and... clever. I think we actually, I think we figured out exactly who did this. I'm fairly confident we know exactly who did this. Okay, but at least I, what I meant is that he, he kind of knew, kind of posted information that is easily to believe, although he's... Photoshop skills are maybe like are lacking there, but he was giving something that is easy to just grab and bite there. Although, yeah, you, you can like tell I that they're a you. gamer too because they use common names for the games in their Ultimate 4K experience slide. Oh wait, like, I didn't even notice that. Everyone talks about Red Dead Redemption, right? Meaning the PC oh. version, but it's yeah. Red Dead Redemption Two. Nobody says the two when they're talking about it, though, because it's the only of one of the two that are on PC. And, and also Witcher sure 3. Enough, it's The Witcher 3. Yeah, it is properly titled The Witcher 3, just like The Division 2. Nobody says Division 2. Yeah. unless But that's a mistake. That's a mistake Andy can make. It is. It is. But I would think that when they put the titles on here, that they would actually go and look at the official title and put that on here. Apparently... Yeah this you know photoshopper <laughs> it yeah. did not bother even going that far with his league I, hope I, you guys do give him some, I do give him some kudos for putting the rxrt branding on here very and creative it, yeah it, it's a term that nobody has really used yet and so it is kind of novel in that regard like, I haven't seen it referred to as that. I probably would have put DXR myself. Yeah. If I was going to make this leak, I would have called it DXR. 
So yeah, uh, D minus. See me after class and all that. <laughs> not not and, really much more here to say, to be honest. Is there? Well, I wanted to just kind of point out some things on these pictures that may not have been readily obvious. Oh, like okay. The reason this card on the right here was put in is because the pips on it were what was used on the fake slide. I put a zoomed in picture. And if you look at this first pip here on the left, the little, the really bright one on the fake, it actually overlaps the uh, shroud. It is oh, yeah, imposed it on top of it. So you can see it's photoshopped on there just because it actually runs over the top here. Whereas if you look on the bottom one, it's actually cut off by the shroud because it's shadowed on the bottom. What a strange mistake to make. <laughs> and even better than that, if you notice, there's that extra row of pips along the bottom that's a lighter or a darker color that is from a different circuit board because that doesn't show up on the one that I put in there that the pips are borrowed from. If you notice, they're a little better resolution on mine because they didn't have to be scaled to fit whatever resolution this other mm -hmm. picture was. And so you can tell what parts are photoshopped by the granularity of the two. It, all the superimposed parts have different uh, DPI sources because of having to scale them. And then, of course, the branding used in the new Radeon logo here straight off of AMD's website but yet using the old branding on the card. I mean, it is hard to pull off the Radeon superimposed on the shroud itself, especially when there's already that on there. You'd have to clean up the surface and then put the new brand on there. But if you're trying to leak something, at least put some effort into it, right? I just hope you're not inviting more of these. Oh, I'm sure after this kind of a debunk, the next one we get might be a little more believable. Yeah, no, please, please send us, please send us fake leaks. Thank you. Yeah, we we could always use fake leaks, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tiger Lake. Yep. Let's go ahead and uh, talk Tiger Lake here. Okay. So the Ryan Trout shared a demo of Tiger Lake uh, CPU running Battlefield Five, and uh, it was decent. This was like 1080p high settings. Are we and sure he actually was playing it, not just watching a VLC video? That's a possibility. <laughs> I remember. But how long ago was that? What? What? Two, two years ago. Really? That couldn't have been two. That I. That was like 2016, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I don't know. It, it was wasn't a while ice, ago. Like, was it? It was. It was like it wasn't it like some guy with a beret on stage or something. I can't remember. Anyways. Uh, so this demo, it was running about like 30 FPS, maybe a little higher, but it had like dips above and below 30 FPS. And I actually test this against my 4900 HS, and that is a 35 watt CPU, Tiger Lake U probably only goes up to 28. But the graphics component, the most important component of this, uh, runs at the same clock speed and has the same amount of cores as the 4800U. Uh, which is going to be a lot closer to Tiger Lake U. And uh, the uh, 4900HS made about 25 frames, which is pretty good for the G processor. But I don't, I mean, like, if it's only 20% faster, it, is that really that good? I mean, you're losing a lot of CPU performance to get just a little bit more graphical performance. I, mean, I guess the other question would be how much more or less power does it draw to do that extra percentage? That's true. We we don't know we know we don't know a lot. I mean, if it got that extra frames at half the power, then yeah, that's that's a remarkable thing. But if it did it at the same power, it's all right. You lose CPU, of course. But if it did it at higher power, that's then, awful. Then it's awful. I mean, sure, you got an extra twenty five frames or whatever, and if you had to spend twice the power to do it, what's the point? <laughs> Like a lot of people have been hyping this up, but the thing is, AMD cut down their graphics for Renoir compared to Picasso. They took out compute units. The only reason why they're faster is because I mean they're running at a higher clock speed, a very high clock speed. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's like they they could have easily beaten this if they wanted to. So 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 really, it's 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 Intel catching up now. A lot of people have also been saying like, oh well, the drivers could be improved and this and that and the other, but it's like. Is it really going to make much of a difference? 
Well, there have people... been some games that were broken that they would tune the drivers, say NVIDIA would tune the drivers yeah. and gain an extra 20% in a particular broken title. But Intel's not showing their worst. There's no way. No, this is probably their best, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they, they have one no of the reason not games. to show the best. Yeah, exactly. And this is Shrout, so of course yeah. he's going to show the most unbalanced, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, performance analysis on, on lap laptops is always something a bit anticlimactic for me because when they are designing the systems for laptops, there's always this trade-off that they have to think about battery life versus performance. Yeah. And so when they dis you never know what you're going to get. It's like like a box of chocolate. Only when you open it, you know what's inside. So well, hopefully not fact, many people are gaming on battery. You well, can do that with the G14. Not. You can. I will but... show the G14 all day. <laughs> it's a great laptop. Sounds like somebody needs to have sent you one rather than you having to buy it yourself. I would have bought it anyways. It, if, uh, I mean, I can't really go outside. Apparently today's podcast is sponsored by ROG. <laughs> they need to fix the battery life thing, though. That's annoying. Well, at least you got somebody's attention, and so they'll yeah. work on it. I told them about it, and they were like, okay. And I'm like, no fix. It's been like a month. Hey. If 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 I wasn't a tinkerer, I'd be really pissed. I'm okay <laughs> with tinkering and like the task manager and everything, but the most people aren't. So yeah, so that's kind of hard to recommend the G14 for everyone. But once they get this fixed, this is basically a perfect laptop. Anyways, Tire Lake. Yeah, when it, I look it, for a laptop, I try to find one that can game, but I'll only really game on power. Like I won't game yeah, this on is, battery. This is why I was excited about Tiger Lake, because because uh, the leak that I got it was very promising mm -hmm. for like the integrated graphics, but it's just like I mean, first of all, Renoir did a lot better than we expected, especially with the lower compute unit count, and B, it's just like it's taken a really long time to get to market. It's not that much faster. Uh, we don't know anything about power efficiency. We don't know if it needs super high speed RAM. We don't know if it's gonna be super expensive. I mean, I've been helping people find laptops and stuff, and I don't know why anyone would recommend something that's not Renoir because it's just yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look, like you look at the battery well, life of the other one. If ones, you want a razor, if you want a razor, you have to go Ice Lake. If you want to yes. XPS, you have to go Ice Lake or Comet Lake. The, the reason why you can't recommend Renoir for everything is that it's not in everything. Especially well, yeah, gaming, there's a very limited laptops. set of laptops, and they're sometimes on back order till September. I mean, it's yeah, they've got a high demand for a very small number of laptop models, and yeah. so that's what I've been beaten up against. And so, I've had to obviously make an AMD and Intel recommendation with the caveat that if you can wait for it, get this one that's coming out or being available in July because that's the closest back order date that i've seen is early july there was a uh, a review i don't know if you've heard of him but dave lee he's this decently popular laptop reviewer and when he reviewed the the uh the new razor stealth the uh the title was razor stealth cursed by intel <laughs> he made it a very strong point that this laptop was bad because of intel or not bad but like all the great things that razor did were heavily uh, compromised hampered. <laughs> yeah hampered by the fact that there was an ice lake cpu in there and he even brought out the g14 and he was like i know this is a very very different laptop and it lacks in a lot of regards but there's a lot this laptop does a lot better even though it's cheaper so anyways yeah i just don't laptop. get the let me uh, ask you as a laptop user uh-huh okay sorry what uh, i was just gonna say i just didn't get the point why they left off the webcam Everyone that's been I, wanting to use these for Teams meetings and things like that. Well, it was designed before the pandemic. And also, the thing is, uh, laptop manufacturers were never willing to upgrade the webcams on pretty much any laptop. So to get rid of the complaints, they decided to remove them. Which is ridiculous. Which Everyone's is complaining ridiculous. because they used them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the worst time to do that. Anyways, Aurelian, okay, what were you Aurelian, saying? Go ahead. 
Yeah, I wanted to ask Matt, as he's here in, among at least among the three of us, the most important laptop user here. So when you are oh. picking your laptop, uh -huh. you want to buy a new laptop. Let's say you're to try, you will replace at some point the current one, the G14. What are your criteria to pick a laptop in order? Like the first, I don't know, three to five criteria. When, when you look for a laptop, uh, what is it that you're looking for? With the G14, what impressed me the most is that it was like basically no compromises. So I can get pretty good gaming performance. Like I can also get really good battery life. And the trackpad's pretty big. And the keyboard's decent. And the build quality's nice. And it's got a good amount of storage, got a good amount of RAM. The RAM is fast. I can also game on the integrated graphics on so the battery. So is, for example, weight not a factor for you? Uh, not really. My old Spectre's yeah. pretty heavy. The granted, it was a 15-inch laptop, not a 14-inch. But I mean, like, as long it's for me, it's really about volume, not weight. Yeah, I, but I'm actually selling my Spectre to my sister, and I opened it up like for the first time in like months, and I was like, wow, I really miss this laptop. And then it got hot and loud, and it started to slow down because of <laughs> Intel. And you're like, I if don't I, miss it much anymore. <laughs> if I could just take out the Intel CPU in there and somehow like uh, Frankenstein a Renoir into there, that would be an incredible processor. And if there was a Spectre, uh, like some kind of Spectre or an XPS with Renoir in there, I might have bought that instead, even though that would be very expensive. Okay, I hope yeah. the manufacturer's taking note. Yeah, do that. Do that if you can, please. <laughs> please don't let Intel be paying you not to do that. Okay. Do yeah. we want to look at uh, the Am Ampere leak? Yeah, let's go ahead and move on to that topic here. We have the page that Rogame actually wrote on his yeah. website, hardwareleaks.com. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, this is the first Ampere leak that I actually like totally believe. Uh, Rogame's commentary, I think, is on point. Uh, that's not exactly like part of the leak, but the leak is that something on 3D Mark came up, and he's confirmed that this is like a, a real. This is a, the real thing. He actually somehow he was able to uh, verify that this was an Nvidia employee accidentally uploading this result to 3D Mark. So this graph, he's compiled some uh, some 2080 Ti's, Titan RTX, Titan V GPUs, and. Uh, what you're seeing here is the what he believes is like a good representation of where exactly this card's landing uh, in the current high-end lineup. So at the bottom, you have the 28 Ti Founders Edition, which he found, which she found a more uh, a higher score for that uh, later. When this article was originally published, the 2080 Ti score was a lot lower. And uh, now it's a lot higher because I guess he like went back and was like, well, this isn't really representative of what the reviewers found. So we have RTX 2080 Ti at 100%, then the 7% uh, faster Titan RTX, then we have a slightly faster 2080 Ti Lightning, and then we have uh, a liquid cool Titan V at 21% faster than 20 Ti. This Ampere GPU is. 31% faster than the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, uh, which is really good. It's beating out the, the overclocked Titan V, and it's just barely behind that 2080 Ti with, with a much higher core clock. So what we're looking at right here is a 31% faster than the 2080 Ti. Uh, at a clock speed, that is, in my opinion, pretty low. That 20 Ti is probably running at about the same, slightly less clock speed, maybe 100 megahertz less. And yeah. uh, but but it's a lot faster. It's a yeah. lot faster. Yeah, and for frame of reference, my 1080 Ti Aorus is running just over 1900 megahertz. So this running at 1935 is actually quite lower than you know, today's 2080 series kind of stuff. It, we're looking yeah. at 2100, 2200 in some cases. And so 1935 is actually slow compared to current 20 series GPUs. Yeah. Um, so the current leaks for what core counts we're dealing with, which I personally, I don't believe these leaks, is I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's like 5,300 something for the top end. Uh, uh, GA102 die and then the same amount for the for the like the 
bottom end GA102, same amount as the uh, 2080 Ti. So that's like 4,352 GeoCores. So, so the difference between the bottom and the top for GA102 based GPUs, it's about 20-25%. Uh, Even assuming perfect scaling, that's not enough to get the 31% that the Ampere GPU gets. And so this, there must be some architectural improvements here. Yeah, so my uh, even, PC changes. Yeah, even if you, even if you're like, okay, the the Founders Edition is running at like 100 megahertz lower, that's still not enough. Uh, and we know there won't be perfect scaling in respect to cores and clock speeds. Now, and there's another thing, I wrote a thing about this on the website, uh, and I said that this was a low clock speed. That is my personal opinion. Perhaps I should have made that clear, but I think we can all agree that this is a pretty low clock speed given that this is on a new node at what is probably Samsung or TSMC. The leaks are either Samsung 8 nanometer or TSMC 7 nanometer, Wh whichever one it is uh, or neither. It, the thing is, is that uh, 20 Ti is based on 12 nanometer, which is based on 16 nanometer. The original 16 nanometer, and, and I just looked this up recently because this is surprising to me. The original 16 nanometer FinFET from uh, TSMC came out in 2013. Uh, NVIDIA's uh, Pascal GPUs use the 2015 plus version of that. So, and the 12 nanometer uh, pro process isn't really that much better. Uh, I don't think the, the 12 nanometer process brings any efficiency improvements. N none that I've seen TSMC claim. So, so no performance or efficiency or, or maybe density improvements. Uh, if you think that this is a, a a pretty high clock speed, I would have to disagree. Because if they're going to a new node, they've got to get at least like 10%, right? Well, we've seen with new nodes a regression in clock speed as well. I mean, Not look, yet. You yeah, look, that's at, what our look at Intel's 10 nanometer. <laughs> that's because 10 nanometer I mean, that's a, that's a dumpster fire, but still. That, that's, be, that's because of two reasons. Because they've optimized on 14 nanometers so much. They've optimized more than almost any other node has ever been optimized for a specific architecture. And B, 10 nanometer really sucks, so they can't really bend for these super high clock speeds. There, I'm sure there's silicon out there on 10 nanometer uh, that could do like 5 gigahertz, but it would probably be at a ridiculously high voltage and power draw, and it'd only be like one in a million. Yeah, and those reasons could be why this is 1935 as well, is to keep don't the so. power draw in check, because oh, obviously oh, more CUDA draw. cores yeah. means that they're going to be drawing more power. They might have to scale it back in processor speed or GPU speed The thing in order to keep the don't, power in check. We don't know how many cores this has. That's the thing. If, if we yeah, have, we don't if know we if this is cores. the top end or if this is a couple steps down from that. It could be a... 30 70 for all we know yeah so it's hard it's kind of hard to tell with the score uh what exactly uh we're looking at i think probably something larger than the 2080 ti but not the full die i think that's probably what's happening yeah i don't think this is the full die rogan was talking about a 3090 a 3080 ti and a 3080 yeah. this could be like the 3080 ti might not be the 3090 or the I Titan think at level. This, I think that kind of stuff is still speculation. Yeah. Because that's what everyone else is saying. And of I course. disagree with that. Uh, or, or if this is the top end. If this is the top end uh, GPU, then NVIDIA, it, it really has to crank up the clock speed in order for this to like look good. Uh, now, based on tech power-ups uh, GPU database... Uh, my, uh, uh, initial prediction for, well, not the initial one, but my updated prediction for the top end Ampere gaming performance was like 80% higher than the 20 ATI. So, so this 30% isn't the same, uh, with what I'm predicting. I, I didn't like actually figure out because tech power up did not do time spy for their 20 ATI. So I don't know what it would have scored. But I think it probably it might have been the same, might have been lower. I don't know. Anyways, uh, for th this to work out, like they're gonna have to bump up the clock speeds by a fair bit. 
I think at least 10% in order to make sure that AMD does not win because yeah. I fully expect AMD to double their performance. Yeah, if this is top end ampere and final clock and everything, this is a very poor showing. Yeah. I mean, th it's when they can barely enough. barely get close to beating their last gen's top end card that in an overclock, <laughs> you know, that's that's pretty poor. And we would expect to see significantly more performance than this especially if they're being scared from rdna2 which yeah early thoughts were that they were i guess that's changed a little bit recently yeah uh i don't i just can't imagine this being final i mean this is the first leak of this kind that we've seen the very first mm -hmm. i have a strong feeling that we're gonna see higher clock speeds even if this is like the final GPU somehow, there must be a reason why the clock speeds are low. They, they, they surely they, they're able to bring it up. Did they ever mix the TI and the Super together? No. There's not no. Super TI, is there? In the we tech were, no. Video Cards was promising a 28 TI Super that never came out. I don't know if, I wonder, it, if it was canned or what. I wonder if they play this game where they are. Let's say this could be some the the final or the the stock frequency from for one of the cards. Let's assume the 2080, and then if they see tough compet and they leave it there to see what uh, AMD does, and if AMD does something better, then they they launch a super version, which they maybe they are able to boost a bit uh, frequency at some. So that maybe this is the sweet spot when it comes to the power and the performance. And then if they see that they are threatened, then they launch a super version, one of those other cards that has a super tag. And it's just a bit faster, just 10% faster, just a little bit so that it's it just beats it in the in the score and just draws a bit more, more than 10% extra, maybe 20%, 25% extra power so that they still are keeping their um, advantage on the, on the benches. Because I I would say that it probably goes like this. I I don't think Nvidia will show will allow the best numbers to be leaked. I think this is not the best they can do. This is probably thirty eighty. And and they if they if this is not enough, then they will make a super version which will run at I don't know, twenty uh, twenty fifty two hundred two thousand one hundred megahertz maybe, just ten percent extra, to beat the whatever. Yeah, and it does make sense that this could be a 3080 level because, yeah. you know, it's faster than the 2080 Ti, so the yeah. one step up kind of thing. And it's actually a fair amount faster because it had to, Yeah, it's tying with a heavily overclocked version. Wasn't it usually so that they have, they have always um, um, targeted their, their upgrades so that the next 80 version was equaling roughly speaking the previous ti wasn't it so so like the 2080 was roughly 1080 yeah, ti I've, I've seen in the past it's you know the what 2060 matches the 1070 things like that yeah yeah so the 2080 is i don't know I'm, I'm, I'm a bit ashamed i don't know the numbers here because yeah. it didn't follow so closely but um yeah it might be 38. I think we're likely due to see an improvement beyond that, though. Like, the 3080 will most likely supersede the yeah. you know, 2080 Ti you know, by a, a larger margin rather than just match it because they're trying to stay ahead of our DNA too. A big unknown, right? Yeah. And obviously the good. pricing could be... A big determining factor. <laughs> that's pricing, yeah. That's yeah. always. There's yeah. not a bad card. There's just bad pricing. Yeah, like, that's unless true. if the card pulls 500 watts. <laughs> that's true. I mean, I, I guess this was the this was. You were. This is what you said. Now it's actually valid for the past how many years with with Nvidia. You could never say one of their, you know, cards were bad. It was all pricing always. Not that their cards were. Yeah. You couldn't laugh at them. Fermi was pretty hot and conscious. heavy and made it a no, undesirable card, back. but Maxwell as long as the pricing was decent, you got performance for the price, even though you had yeah. to melt your wall to do it. So do you want to hear my clock speed prediction for like the final product? Sure. Go ahead. This is what a lot of people were like, you're crazy about. So <laughs> I think at the very least, they'll get 2.4 gigahertz. Wow. Yeah, I think they can do the it. top end. 
I'm uh, I'm being more conservative. Yeah. I'll say two point one because they are moving to a new process four. node. I am expecting a slight regression in top end I, speed. I tend to agree with bit. I, I tend to agree more with Kirk, but yeah, we never know. But yeah, I, I will also be a bit more uh, skeptical a bit, especially yeah. because of that. Yeah, I know two point four is like pretty high. I don't know. I think they can do it if they really wanted to. It, if they're moving to it, TSMC's 7N or something like that, I think they could because those are some pretty good nodes, right? Yeah. But if they're mm -hmm. doing this on Samsung, they could very well have a regression in clock speed overall. But they're having... I, I'm thinking they might have to balance between the two just to get the volume they need. Yeah. Because you got to think, for every one AMD card that's sold, NVIDIA is selling like six. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's ridiculous how many cards they're selling. And so it, just for the volume alone, it, we know that there's not going to be enough in TSMC to be able to kick out all of that. So they're going to have to use some node over in Samsung's wheelhouse. Uh, all right. So is that it? Um, did we want to speculate what we think is bad about the 6900 XT leak, or did we want to kick that down the road for a later podcast? What do you mean? What's I thought we already went over that. Well, I know, but just like we went over our thoughts of the NVIDIA card, should we go over our thoughts of AMD card or save it for another podcast? Oh, okay, sure. No, no. So, so what I expect for like a top end AMD card is pretty much what's on those slides. I don't know about like memory configuration or whatever, but a compute units. Somewhere around 2 gigahertz, like similar to the 5700 XT, maybe a little bit higher. And it's going to be like maybe like twice as fast as the 5700 XT. At yeah. what power? Uh, like, I don't know. Like 300? 300. Yeah, 300. I mean, we had that Cortex video, and so I figured it'd be good to provide a more uh, down-to-earth speculation about it <laughs> just as a just as an aside to that i don't think 84 compute units is possible yeah, i don't with the layout they cut down to keep to it, it symmetric yeah that's that's weird 84 i would have thought it would be 88 yeah and then cut that down to 80 and have yeah. that mm. those extra eight for redundancy in the mm. node so that they can get better yields but even 88, that's a fair amount more than I would expect them to want to seed in there to disable for yield purposes. I mean, we know that the Xbox had four CUs cut out for yield because yeah. that's a, what, 56, and they cut that down to 52. Mm -hmm. And so that is improving their yield for those. And they would have to do something similar with RDNA 2. Sorry if I didn't follow this. Is, are they going to use the same node as in the 5700 series, or are they going to change the uh, node as well for the 69? It's a good, it's a good question. question. Yeah. I that's, mean, uh, they got the uh, EUV coming down the pipe, 7N. They have, uh, they have the potential to use a newer node. Uh, one thing I did read that's interesting is that instead of having like uh, 7 nanometer, 7 nanometer P, 7 nanometer plus, TSMC might uh, allow their customers like to customize it more, like select which exact technologies they want to use. So that's why we might be seeing like uh, this like weird like name change, where instead of AMD promising seven nanometer plus, which we thought was going to be the EUV node, they're just saying seven nanometer. So it could include EUV. It might not. It might include the same mm. technologies the P node includes. It might not. Uh, so it could be a an efficiency gain from Arc alone. The one thing I did want to talk about, though, is Cortex was mentioning something about HBM. He had the feeling or saw in the code that there was a HBM controller. Yeah. And he's going off in this world of having two different cards, one with GDDR6 and one with HBM. Oh, wait, do you mean like two different products? Yeah, so tiers. Oh. Just like the top end card could be HBM, or the next one in line could be GDR, depending on the bandwidth needs, right? I thought he was saying like both at the same time. No, no. I like a mix. Oh, yeah. No, he was saying basically tiering. From what I understood, I could have misunderstood, oh. but 
I really don't think that's the case. Like HBM, they have a the cDNA for compute for the server side of things. They could put the HBM controller in that, hundred percent. They wouldn't need to bring it to the desktop GPUs unless if they were going to use it. Now the thing that I think they might try is something that I've been kind of rattling around in my head. What if they did eight gig of HBM two? and then put another 8 gig of GDDR on the card. Then they could prioritize all data to go into the 8 gig of HBM until it needs to overflow into the 8 gig of GDDR. Then so all that games that don't use more than 8 gig is going to benefit from HBM speeds, and then it'll eventually slow down once it needs to expand into that other 8 gig. It could be a simple tier, like an LVM, from Linux, mm. where it just overflows into the GDDR6. Or they could have some way to tag it, to have priority to be resident in the HBM for you know, textures and um, polygons that are used frequently. So say your character, for instance, you know, that could stay resident in the HBM. And this then, sounds like a I, lawsuit waiting to happen. Depends. I mean, well, they got store MI. They've done caching before. This, it would be more of a tiering method similar to their new version of store mi what if they are doing uh, what if it's this it's the controller there, there for the instinct cards well maybe if they are sharing some of the architecture well, between the desktop and the instinct card the next C one well they CDNA, did say that cdna is different yeah cdna i think is based on vega is it not Something like that. Ah, okay, okay, okay. But it's yeah, a yeah, completely yeah. different die, yes. and so since they aren't yeah. sharing yeah. an yeah. I.O. die or anything like that, they don't need to have the right. HBM controller in desktop RDNA because they got yeah, CDNA remember. they can put it in. So if uh, it's there, they might have some intention of using it, and this is the only thing I can think of that would make sense. Well, there is that... Uh, you remember the Navi 12 GPU that was coming up now and then, and uh, it kind of disappeared from view. Sure. Remember that? Yeah, so that actually finally came out. It's an Apple GPU. It's the uh, mm -hmm. Pro 5600M, and it has HBM2. So it could be like a mm -hmm. like an Apple thing. Custom, yeah. Well, sort of custom. It's yeah, sort of it, custom. it could be for Apple yeah. devices. Yeah. So there's no total lack of credit there. I mean, it could definitely be like a separate product that has it. If I was pushing for better performance and that kind of thing, I would think that this caching or should I uh, tiering method I should stop saying caching it's not caching it only stores one copy of the data and it just tiers it depending on its name. but I wonder will that require changes to the when you're using the game or will they make it so that it's transparent it could all be done on card I mean they could pass the ability to tag particular polygons or whatnot as being um, static you know, important, and then you know, that one should always stay in HBM kind of thing. If they wanted to give that kind of control, they could put a little bit of logic in there to determine hot data, but that wouldn't even be necessary. They could just straight load the game into the first 8 gig of RAM being HBM, and then allow it to overflow in the GDDR for whatever's left. And even then, most of the game will be running out of HBM, and we'll have the speed of that. And they could access both at the same time because they use separate controllers. Mm. And so they would get a significant boost to throughput just with the bus of the HBM, let alone the fact that they could use GDDR at the same time. But then they could also have that extra eight gigs so they could call it a 16 gig card as well. And any game that doesn't go into that extra eight gig would be running as if it's an HBM card. I mean, th there's a lot of pros I can see and very little logic that needs to be put in there to handle this kind of a thing. The only thing you'd have to worry about is that little bit of space when it overflows from the HBM into the GDDR, but we've already seen them with their technology allowing you to use system RAM to expand your video RAM. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Well. They could it's, essentially emulate that for the GDDR on the card and have this big unified memory architecture idea be able to use that extra RAM. You sold me on the idea. I don't think it's a bad idea technically, 
Now, whether it's coming or not in Navi 2, that's a different question. Yeah, whether it's cheap enough to do, whether yeah. they thought of it for, maybe they did think of it, they tried it out and it didn't work as well as it sounds. Who knows? Yeah. I'm just throwing it out there as some yeah. <laughs> option on why this HBM controller would be in there, even though we know the HBMs are rather expensive. I, we know that they had a hard time just selling cards with 8 gig and actually come out positive. So I'm speculating. More likely, in my opinion, that they might be like, you, I don't know who mentioned, but they could be a different line totally. So like your... The best card could be a HBM and the rest could be GDDR6. Yeah, so even if it was a Halo product. Yeah, even if it was just the Halo product, just to get that top end benchmark. Yeah, just to get exactly, just to get there up there to be to to compete with the TIs. We know they're running a lot of games in these benchmarks that don't use eight gig of RAM, of VRAM. So these would be perfect games to get significant score gains in with an ADCU card, just hammer it with all of this bandwidth from HBM and get just outrageous points in and then have worse points in games that are newer, you know, like brand new running 4k ultra everything. And they'll have more reasonable inline scores for those. Or maybe they won't because they'll be using two different memory controllers accessing RAM at the same time and thus have even more bandwidth. Who knows? It's kind of exciting to think about. Yeah. Uh, well, even if they do do this, I don't think it's going to matter because I'm pretty sure NVIDIA is going to win. Yeah, I'm just thinking of ways they could close the gap. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I do think NVIDIA, they are a strong competitor. They have a lot of great minds working on these cards, and they seem to be relentless at getting at least 25, 50% improvements every generation, even if it's just overclocking mm -hmm. the thing, right? But still, they are making great strides, and it will be a very interesting year. I think mm. when September-ish rolls around, it'll be very interesting to read all the reviews. And I really hope that we have one ourselves. Uh, we might have to take out a loan for it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or wait an extra couple weeks for it to get done. Yeah. But yeah, we, we might have to mortgage the house, for sure. Oh, thank God. I don't have a house to mortgage. That is the one thing that we know for a fact is the pricing will be ridiculous. Okay, well, I think that's a, I think that's a wrap. That's all that we wanted to cover. Yep. We thank you guys for joining us. I uh, hope you guys have liked to hit that like button. Comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, we do try to at least reply to a lot of the comments and give some feedback, some things like that. And hit the subscribe button, of course. And we will see you in the next one.